CIA. Today I'm going to blow your mind and show you how three equals one by turning these three cookies into one cookie. Enjoy this awesome song by Seeds Family Worship to help you learn your memory verse while I do this. them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit all right get ready Hey y'all, my name is Aaron and I'm from Life Point Church in Chambersburg, PA. Today we are talking about the Trinity. It's one of the most confusing topics in all of Christianity. Here's what you need to know. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4, we find one of many verses that say there is only one God. Here's what it says. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This verse is so important that many Jews will recite it three times a day to reinforce to themselves that there is only one God. Now that's not too confusing, but where it starts to get confusing is when we talk about three persons being one God. Three equals one. In Christianity, we talk about how God the Father is God, and Jesus the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, and yet the Father is not the same as Jesus. And Jesus is not the same as the Spirit. And the Spirit is not the same as the Father. But there's only one God. But the Father is God. But Jesus is God. But the Spirit is God. But the Father isn't the same as Jesus. And Jesus isn't the same as the Spirit. And the Spirit isn't the same as the Father. But there's only one God. <laughs> this is a crazy idea. I mean, you have three persons who are all 100% God. They're not a part of God. They're not a third of God. They're each 100% God and yet they're not the same as each other. How can this be? My puny little human mind can't quite wrap itself around this incredible concept. But to be honest, I'm okay with that. And here's why. If God really is the all-powerful, awesome, supernatural, otherworldly being God, then as a puny human, 
I should not quite be able to understand all of who he is. I mean, if I could totally understand the concept of God, it would scare me a little bit because I would wonder, did humans just make God up? But if God really is the incredible God, then there should be some things about God that are so mysterious to me that they are beyond my comprehension. C.S. Lewis said it this way. He was the guy who made up that book series that they turned into a movie series with that lion in it. Roar! C.S. Lewis said, think about a two-dimensional person and a three-dimensional person. This is 2D Aaron. 2D Aaron understands the y-axis. And 2D Aaron understands the x-axis. But 2D Aaron has no concept of the z-axis, right? So if 2D Aaron was going to introduce 3D Aaron to his friends, he'd be able to say, Aaron is about this tall. And he'd be able to say, Aaron is about this wide. And then he'd start saying, and Aaron is, there's some, there's some other spectrum here that Aaron goes out that way. And his friend would be like, what are you talking about? I don't understand. This doesn't make sense in my world and in my concepts. And they'd have a hard time talking about it to each other. The same is true with us. We live in our human 2D world. We have a hard time understanding the awesome 3D God. If we just made up the concept of God, we would not make up the Trinity because it wouldn't make sense to anybody else. The fact that we believe the Trinity is proof that God himself revealed it to us in the Bible. It was God who said, look, I'm just one God. And it was God who said, the Father is God, and Jesus the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, but we're not three gods, we are one God. This was revealed to us as truth in the Bible, and it makes me worship God more that he is beyond what I can fathom and understand. All right, let's talk a little bit more about Jesus, because out of the three of them, he probably is the one that other people have the hardest time believing is truly God. How do we know that Jesus is God? Here are some of my favorite verses in the Bible where God tells us that Jesus is God. The one is from Matthew 1, chapter 23, when Jesus is about to be born. It says, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. One of the names given to Jesus was Emmanuel. It literally meant God with us because Jesus is God walking around earth with human beings. Some other verses come from John where it says, In the beginning was the Word. That's a title for Jesus. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. That's crazy. Jesus wasn't just some special human being who was with God. Jesus himself was God. It goes on to say in verse 18, No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Man, it's an incredible concept that when people were seeing Jesus walking around on earth, they were getting a glimpse of God himself, what God would say, what God would do, how God would act. And there's lots of other verses about it. Romans 9, 5 ends with the Messiah. That's a title for Jesus. Who is God over all. The Messiah is God over all. But some of my favorite verses come from Revelation at the beginning and the end. Because in Revelation chapter 1, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Alpha and Omega is like saying the A and Z of the Greek alphabet. I am the Alpha! I am the very beginning! There is no one before me! And I am the Omega, the very end, the end all of end all. There is no one after me. That's what God the Father calls himself, the Alpha and Omega. The crazy thing is that if you look at the end of Revelation in chapter 22, Jesus calls himself the very same thing. Jesus says in verse 12, look, I am coming soon. And then he goes on in verse 13 and says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, 
the beginning and the end. And so Jesus says, I am the Alpha. And the Father says, I am the Alpha. Now you know, you can't have two Alpha dogs. It would be a problem unless Jesus and the Father are one and the same guy. A couple years ago, I had two people show up at my door. They were two people that had a lot of same spiritual beliefs as I did, but there were a few key different ones. So I said, I really admire how you guys believe in God. I believe in God too. And I admire how you want to live good lives. We need more people in the world who want to live good lives. But here's one thing that I believe that's just a little different, and that I believe that Jesus actually is God himself. Check out this passage in Revelation. In Revelation chapter 4, we get a glimpse of God's throne room in heaven. It's a pretty spectacular scene. As they're describing the throne room, you see that there are four creatures around God's throne that are worshiping him. In fact, it says, day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. They were God's personal 24-7, 365, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever worship team. That's all they did. They just worshiped God all the time. And I said to my visitors, uh, you're only supposed to worship God, right? And they said, yeah. And I said, and it's blasphemy to worship anybody else, right? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, check out what happens in chapter 5. In chapter 5, Jesus, who is pictured as a lamb, is found worthy to open this special scroll. And when he takes the scroll, this is what it says. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. They took a break from worshiping God the Father, and instead they fell down an act of worship before Jesus. And instead of singing their worship song to God the Father, they started singing their worship song to Jesus. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. Because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. And before long, 10,000 times 10,000 angels joined them in worshiping Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. And I said, if we are only supposed to worship God then doesn't the fact that God's personal worship team stops and worships Jesus prove that Jesus is God? And they said, uh... For 2,000 years, Christians all over the world have been worshiping Jesus as God because the Bible tells us that Jesus is God. Here are two takeaways that I want to give you from the Trinity. The first is that God is a God of relationships. He is the tri-person unity, the Trinity. Tri-person unity, three persons who are completely united together into one God. And God made you and me in his image, which means he made us to need relationships with God and with each other. When I first got serious with Jesus back in the summer after eighth grade, one of the first things I did was to join a Bible study at my school. And in that Bible study, I got connected to other friends and classmates who also had this shared passion for Jesus. And as I related to them, I felt whole for one of the first times that I can ever remember in my life. I had this relationship with Jesus and I had this relationship with his church here on earth. I want to encourage you to get plugged in to CIA and to a church and to other groups of Christians where you can find some awesome friendships and grow closer to each other and closer to God. Here's the second thing. Jesus did what God the Father told him to do. 
In John chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees the Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. And later on in John chapter 12, verse 49, Jesus says, I didn't speak my own words. I only spoke what the Father told me to speak. Now, if even Jesus only did and only said what God the Father told him to do and say, what does that mean for you and me? It means we should probably be taking some time to just check in with God and say, hey, God, what do you want me to do this year? What do you want me to do today? In this situation, in this conversation with this person, what do you want me to say back to them? This is something I've just been learning myself. And there's times in conversations where I just pray quickly in my head, God, what do you want me to say? And I try to listen to whatever impressions he gives me to say to this other person. The Trinity, three persons, one God. I don't quite understand it myself, but that's how God revealed himself in the Bible. And I'm okay with it because God is truly awesome and he is beyond my understanding. I'm telling you, I met this guy. He was three-dimensional. What are you talking about? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, he was tall and he was wide and then he also went this other way. What other way? I'm, I'm trying to show you, but my arm just doesn't go that way. I don't know what you're talking about. See you later.